wants you to succeed. Have faith of a mustard seed. Get up on your feet, rise up. Welcome to the Draxwell Seema Show. Today I'm excited about this show. This is real stuff. We, you know, we're really here at a site with this young man named Tavern Ramsey. Um, he's growing his own um, plants. And of course, you can purchase them. We're going to go through the process. I, I mean, I love it. I'm excited about it. I wish I could do this. But he's very passionate about it. And so um, he has his own company called Turks and Caicos Horticulture. And we'll hear more about that. And we hear this is a passion. And stay tuned and get excited. And you don't have to worry about getting stuff with chemicals on it because he has the real deal right here. Turks and Caicos Horticulture. So with that said, I want to welcome Mr. Ramsey to the show. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me. Yes. So tell us, how does this start it? I mean, what got you into um, going into um, agriculture? So a lot of this started from when I was a child, so I'd say about 10 years old. Oh, okay. Um, I actually used to have smaller plants that I grew, for example, like different varieties of peas, sweet peppers, tomatoes. Really? Just a little, yeah, just a little small plot on uh -huh. the property that we had down in Blue Hills. Right. Um, from there, it spiraled. It was actually off and on as time went on and as I got a bit older, but I always circled back to growing mm -hmm. my own plants. It wasn't like a huge, more or less a huge hobby, but I always had passion for it. Yeah. Like just the joy so, of watching a plant start from the beginning right. and maturing and being able to harvest off of it. All right. So that's, that's, that's sort of like it was within you then. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's amazing from 10 yeah, years I old. So. Yeah. Wow. So tell us about this. How, how did you set this up? And they tell us about the, you don't have to tell us everything because I don't want to. No, that's fine. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. So the setup that I have here is actually called an NFT system. Um, that stands for Nutrient Film Technique. Okay. And Nutrient. what it is, is basically the framing with the channels and it's built in an angle. So okay. it's actually pre-built. Um, once everything comes in, all the different parts, I actually have a few boxes outside that spend uh -huh. the extra side. Once you get it from the company, um, you just assemble everything together and it has like a slight slope. Okay. And then you have like the catchment channels that's in the back or uh -huh. the waistline. Right. As the water flows through the system here on the NFT system, it basically goes into the waste catchment or the waistline and then goes back into the reservoir. Okay. So as you can see here, yeah. You basically, as you can see right here, um, you can see the water that's flowing mm -hmm. through the channel itself, mm -hmm. this actually houses the nutrients that's added into the reservoir. And the type of system that the NFT system uses is basically a recirculating system. So the nutrients that's inside of the tank constantly circulate. So you use probably about 90% less water oh, compared okay. to if you were doing like traditional farming with soil, um, whereas I with see. soil, it tends to absorb a lot of the water and there's a lot of wastage, but this saves a lot of water. I see. So, yeah. like, the soil has the nutrients, but this year you, you put the nutrients in the water. Correct. All right. Um, is this an expensive thing to set up? Some people would say yes. Some mm -hmm. would say no. But in this case, I would say it is quite expensive to set up. Mm -hmm. um, the system itself isn't too costly, but then you have to take in grand scheme the entire system or the, the entire setup which is going to be the greenhouse right the flooring oh, yes. the covering and then the system itself of course and if you if you're not able to set it up yourself you have to pay somebody to set it up but most of it i literally done myself that's amazing everything here that you see especially in particular the lettuce and the basil i start everything from seed um it takes roughly about six weeks mm -hmm. so a normal cycle for this would be um continuous six weeks from seed until you're able to harvest okay so let's go over the different plants now. What's this one here? What's this? So this section here, um, this is actually romaine lettuce. Okay. And this is green leaf. And yeah. then over on the end there, you have your basil. Uh huh. So these are just smaller or juvenile. Oh, lettuce. this is a yeah, yeah. Okay, until they reach that size. Correct. Okay. Um, these are actually baby basil as well. And they'll get about this size and a little, actually a bit bigger than this. Mm -hmm. um, and this right here, what's this? And then... Oh, this is the basil. Yeah, this is the basil. And right here, I got some mint. Mint. And then here I have some sample green onions. onions. Yeah. Okay. And that's basil too, I yeah, guess. Yeah, basil as well. Wow. So it's like what, seven different, eight different? Um, right now I'm doing roughly about four different varieties. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to phase out probably like one or two of them, but then add additional ones as well mm -hmm. to make up for that. Okay. And so 
You're able to sell these? Correct. You, you have clients who you sell it to? So right now, my target market, well, the market that I sell to currently is actually hotels and restaurants. Amazing. You do have a few other private persons that do approach me now and then to purchase some of the produce, but those are my main customers okay. right now as we speak. All right. So like, what's the capacity? Like, how much, I mean, can you, at one time, can you, you sell to your clients? So how the system is set up mm -hmm. and how I operate it now, they have something that's called like a crop rotation. The entire system itself, I could, like actual individual units that I can grow, mm -hmm. probably well over a thousand. But how I set it up is I want to have like a weekly cycle. So instead of me having to wait six weeks each time to get a harvest, I could actually harvest um, weekly. Ah, that's why you say rotation. Yeah. With regards to the quantity that I can produce mm -hmm. on a weekly basis, um, currently with the current size that I have now and the different channels, I can produce roughly about 360 per week, and that's 360 heads per per per. Sorry, mess up this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. I start over again. Yeah. 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 So yeah, with the current capacity that I have now, I could actually produce 360 units mm -hmm. or heads of lettuce or individual plants inside of the channels. Mm -hmm. Now, with the system itself, I have two different areas, mm -hmm. which would be like a nursery area, and then you have the finishing channels that would be for like the adult plants, which would be the east side here. And mm -hmm. this would be in the finishing channel for roughly about two weeks, whereas the juveniles would be anywhere between three and four weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, I know you have a full-time job. Correct. Um, do you see yourself eventually this... Turks and Cakes are becoming a full-time thing for you? Wait. Over time, yes. For Over sure. time? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that's something you're really, really um, passionate about. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah man. It, the thing about it is, uh, speaking about passion, with this business itself, I actually had to go through a phase where it was a bit hard, but if I, if I wasn't passionate about it, I probably wouldn't have pushed forward. Yeah. And at one point, I had equipment just sitting down for roughly about almost two years. Really? Yeah. And just watching like thousands mm. just sitting in front of you. That was one of the hardest and yeah. most challenging parts of this whole process. But yeah. then one day I got up and just decided, hey, I need to go out and just start. And once I started, it just yeah. it came up in like maybe a month and a half. I had everything put together and up. That's very good. Yeah. So you plan to expand more, I assume. I see you have more of this equipment here. What do you call Correct. this? Uh, NFT channels. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I, get, I see a lot more here. So yeah, I, I'm assuming you're going to expand and... Yeah, for sure. So right now, I actually did, did a harvest on this side. So that's uh -huh. why it's a bit empty. And then uh -huh. I, have, I have a next batch of plants that I, some of them I start inside and then uh -huh. bring out. So I have a next batch that's going to come in. Mm -hmm. This is going to move down. Or I may leave it here and then add them on this side. I understand. But these are just channels. Some of them are channels that I just have to go through and disinfect mm -hmm. and clean. Because mm -hmm. I try to clean it like every time I do a harvest, which is okay. weekly. Um, okay. But yeah, at the end of this system here i actually have an addition that's going to go on this and that's mm -hmm. going to bump up production to a little over 500 units a week that's amazing yeah. so like um this tells me then that if more of us could do something similar then we we don't have to really rely on um imports for um our green stuff correct and more of us can do this correct. you know i mean we you know this this is something that if more of us do it we're able to supply each other, supply businesses and individuals. And I think that's something we need to, to, to practice. You're 100% correct with that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, and it's something that I brought up multiple times and mm -hmm. I sort of like advocate for it, which is more persons getting into agriculture, in particular in Turks. Reason being is we import probably like 99% oh, of absolutely. everything that mm -hmm. we can consume here. Yeah. And the market is vast. You have a lot of tourists that come here. And also your actual local market is quite huge as well. Yeah. So if you have like a collection of farmers that come together and say, hey, let's, let's focus on different crops mm -hmm. and be able to supply. Everyone knows who to go to, yeah. what they could get, and everyone will have an idea of um, what can be, be produced. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is, is actually quite a bit of money inside of it as well. Whenever yeah. you get into the flow and start yeah. pumping on volume. Yeah. Um, but the thing about it is, we as a country, we do have to come to a point where we aren't that heavily reliant on yeah. external dependent, yeah. yeah, external countries mm -hmm. or even governments in yeah. order to get food. Yeah. And that's one of your main things that you need. You need food and shelter. Yep. So absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely I I do look forward to the day where 
we reach a point where yeah. we are not as reliant on other countries yeah. in order to feed ourselves. Yeah, this is a start. This is a start. Yeah, definitely. So you do you have people working with you? You do this by you do everything by yourself right now. Currently, I do most everything by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the process of having someone come in like on a weekend mm -hmm. um, to help me like do all of the time consuming stuff. Right. But in general, is it's not that time consuming right. to be honest. That's another good point too. It's, <laughs> it's not, not that time, time consuming. consuming. No. And are these things, um, if I don't want to call a name, not drills, what do you call it again? Are they, are they yeah. duty free? Or you have to pay duties? Uh, going through TC Invest and also Agriculture, once you register with them, um, I could bring them in without having to pay duties. I'll pay like a processing fee, but yeah, yeah. That's, as, that's as far as it goes for the channels. Okay. You know, anything related to the business. But then you have to become like a registered farmer in mm -hmm. order to have that mm -hmm. um, concession, basically. Yeah, yeah. So how do people um, get in contact with Turks and Caicos article? You have a website or contact? How do, yep. how do we get in contact with you? Because we might want to purchase um, some of this stuff. So the easiest way to get in contact with me would be via social media. I'm working on the number right now, but I have a website as well. I just finished the website probably about a week ago. Uh -huh. So that's currently live. Um, if you want to leave a message on there, Okay, that's what's fine the website well. name? It's www tchorticulture.com. So www.tchorticulture.com. Correct. All right. Yeah. Is there anything else you you like to share with the viewers that we didn't that we didn't address in in our conversation? I would say similar to a previous podcast that I was on. I would say I would push persons to get more into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, not necessarily have to be agriculture, but actually start a business and i know for some people starting a business ain't really the thing for them to do mm -hmm. but at the same time you have to think about long term and at least trying to do a little bit more like having a job is not an issue mm -hmm. um because all of us have to sustain ourselves yeah but at the same time the cost of living is getting quite high yeah and if you really do the numbers and calculate yeah how much you would need to sustain yourself over a period of time let's just say after you retire most persons don't have that, mm -hmm. aren't able to save it in a lifetime. And a lot of times working, you're unable to achieve that number. Yeah. And for right. most persons, that number probably would be somewhere, say about 600,000 you right. would need. Because the average person probably would extend past retirement age, mm -hmm. maybe about 15, 20 years. And if you calculate mm -hmm. how much you would need to sustain yourself every mm -hmm. year and then multiply that by 15 or 20, mm -hmm. then you get that number. Yeah. And of course, we need to eat healthy as well. Correct. Why is so it important it. for people to consume green stuff? Why is that important? I would say this. A lot of food that we have is heavily processed. Yeah. Um, if you're able to get your greens, whether it's fruits, vegetables, any, any one of those, if you can get them fresh, mm -hmm. whether it's organic or even grown hydroponically, you get a lot more nutrients. Whereas, let's just say... You get something that's heavily processed a lot of the nutrients is actually stripped from mm. that food itself and when you by the time you open that can or pop that bag and you start to eat it you barely get much nutrients and that's why you have a lot of health issues with a lot yeah. of persons later on in life and they only find out well hey yeah i've been eating this way for so long true all of that build up and cause you to have a lot of health issues later down the line and that becomes costly as well yeah right so tell the viewers who your parents are. I forgot to mention that. Who are your parents? <laughs> <laughs> parents are Dion and Shirley and Ramsey. Yes. Um, probably the only set of Ramsey's here in Jackson Caicos, to be honest. Probably. I know of. But your mom is originally from South Caicos. Yeah, she's South originally Caicos. from South Caicos. She's, she's Thomas. originally a Thomas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here and at your place. And I'm excited what is in store for, the, just not for you, for the entire country. Because if okay. more of us could do stuff like this, it will help us. It will help us with our health, lifestyle. It will help us to reduce our dependence on other countries. And I, and I think if, and I just like what you're doing, you know, sometimes people tend to look down on agriculture. And, you know, we don't need to. Agriculture is a way of survival, actually. We need yes. food, like you say. That's Definitely. one of the basic um, survivals, things we need. One of the basic needs is, is, is food. And, and we need our green stuff. Um, it was created by God and we, you know, this is, this is awesome what you're doing and I want to congratulate you. How long have you been doing this now? The actual hobby or the business itself? This business. Uh -huh. um, 
I actually started, when I say started, as in like actual growing yeah. inside of the system itself, that would have been around summertime last year. Oh. But during that time, I wasn't selling anything. I was just testing out Okay, the whole okay. So this is really new? Uh, not really. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm familiar with, with hydroponics for like yeah. years now. Yeah. But, but the actual with business. The NFC, yes. The actual physical business being built and actually operational, I would say summertime. But I had like a lot of equipment that I started the process about, say, about two years ago. Oh, yeah, because I remember, I remember you yeah. say you had stuff sitting there for Correct. two years. You like know. I started the whole process, but actual having the system, everything put together yeah. and growing. Yeah. I, I did like a, quite a bit of test trials, mm -hmm. different varieties of letters. So yeah. a lot of people didn't know or see that. Yeah. But I did a lot of tests and I had a lot of lost crop. Like at yeah. one point I had like 350 heads of lettuce. I had to get rid of because yeah. yeah yeah because i ran into issues uh -huh. um whether it's with the heat or uh -huh. maybe bolting or something like that but but it's test and trial now yeah, so yeah. now you you got it Most so this of the main ones yes so yeah. this meant we could make mint tea then eh? yeah of course i i make mint tea with it now yeah? yeah i love i love mint i love mint i'll actually get you some before you leave all right yeah, yeah, this is sure. nice this I'll is nice you know. this is nice again congratulations and thanks again i appreciate it all thanks right. for coming. Yeah. Oh